Are you ready? Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to stay notified. Sly Gittins here with another security tip. And today we're going to be tackling privileged access management and leveraging security access to do that for you. Some things I'm going to do before to keep this video nice and short for you is I already configured some of my policy. I'm just going to go in and talk through what I actually did so you know how to do it yourself when you leverage RSA Secure ID Access. So first pace that I want you to know about is you need to understand the RSA Cloud Authentication Service and Admin Console. So that's where I am right now. So the main page, you're going to be able to get to pretty much everywhere we need to go. But some areas I want you to pay attention to is kind of where your system status is, right? That's going to tell you exactly how many active identity routers that you have how many identity sources so if you have any LDAP on um, v3 identity sources you'll see them here and if you have SMS and voice token codes activated on your account and how many did you use that month so I use 12 this month but the really cool thing I like to show is all the different clients that you can see from the beginning if this wasn't configured it'd be similar to this gray box and this wouldn't be here and let's say to configure your radius set up your certificate and set up your other access policies here. So RSA does a great job at not only letting you know exactly what do you need to do to get started, they give you step-by-step -step kind of instructions how to get it done. All right, so let's get into some more of the, the cool things I want to talk about today. So some of the things that you need to understand about RSA that what makes it different is that not only does it give you information and context of application, it also does it for user and it also does that for authentication risk as well. So we're going to talk about the different areas now, right? So first thing you need to take a look at is the different assurance level. One of the things you can do, you can prioritize the type of level of assurance that you want. I usually see when I go into accounts, approve device biometrics, authenticate code, or what we would do here, maybe a FIDO token code, a secure ID token, an approved code. From this do rate, having a physical token is you know, some of the highest level of security. So you want to start off with that token code here to give you that. But if you have a low I mean a low assurance level, you can and you will inherit the medium and high assurance factors. Vice versa, if you have a high level assurance, you only get what's in here. So it'd be only to authenticate token code unless I added something else. And medium inherits high high assurances, right? So you might say, Sylvester, well, that's great. I like that. And I really do like the different, um, you know, authentication methods that can be used as used for a step up authentication. I need to make sure that I have my admins on a different policy than my traditional users. So I need my privileged access users to have a more stringent way to authenticate. So what we're going to take a look at right now is my seamless access policy that I so within seamless access what can you do again you want to see me attack leveraging my identity as source active directory because that's where I'm gonna pull my attributes from but we broke it down into day-to-day -day users and what does that actually pertain right so with day-to-day -day users first thing we want to do is who do we want to apply it to well I want to do it a certain right so how do I build that out let's click edit right here and it's gonna say what's the value what's the attribute that I set for that group you know, virtual groups, and that's going to be my day-to-day -day users. And with day-to-day -day users, we're going to allow access, but we're going to do something conditional, right? When we're doing conditional, this is when the fun stuff comes in, right? So now this is this when I was talking about before when we was able to do risk context and also doing that user context, right? So the user is everyday users, and we want to ensure that they are the correct person accessing. So let's take the trusted network. Right. If they on a network that we deem that is trusted, we can leverage that. So if that's true and we see right here, the trusted location is true. OK, is in um, Ingram's headquarters. True. And the country is the United States. Grant these people access because we did enough to ensure that this person is who they say they are. What if we wanted to add something else? Some other things that we can gather and to unlock all the other features outside of IP address, you're going to need a premium secure ID access package. Please take a look at how to select the correct secure ID access edition. Um, take a look at that link that's above right now and you understand which one is right for your organization. But when you see all these are going to be, if you don't have it, it's only going to, everything's going to be grayed out IP address. But if you have premium, everything's going to be open. But you can leverage these at different ways 
to authenticate, right? So let's get out of here. And then you also have the ability to say deny, allow, or authenticate. So you might say, Sylvester, okay, that's great. I, I do like that feature right there. That's pretty nifty. So let's take a look at the admin rule. So the admin rule, same thing. I created a virtual group. I labeled it admin group. I'm going to allow access. But for this one, there's no conditional. You have to do this. It's a high level of Saren, so we're taking that token code. So it's inheriting that high level of assurance from the assurance level that we created, right? So it's going to do that. So not only does my admins have it, my day-to-day -day users have access, and now you can say with confidence that you have now all your privileged access admins have to be four step up authentication because we know if a hacker gets his or her hands on your admin credentials, they're gonna wreak havoc in your environment and RSA is taking the steps to provide that additional security, right? So not only can we do that, some things I wanna show you are, how do we do that for certain applications? So let's go take a look at my applications and AWS integration. Um, and let's go straight to user access. So I can allow all users in there, or I could use the policies that I created for it to happen here, like a low assurance policy. We can leverage that for application based, application based security. So when you talk to those multi factor vendors or those cloud authentication vendors, ask them how are they really providing that security? And what I found from doing my research, the majority of them only focus on application based security. But what about the users? Each users need their own way to authenticate. And what about the actual authenticate itself? Why shouldn't the solution be able to understand exactly who needs to have access? And then if it's seen that type of authentication before and it's comfortable for allowing you into the organization, it should give you that access. And that's what RSA Secure ID Access delivers for you. So again, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to, um, to tell your friends, share this video. If you got any suggestions, use that comment. Don't be afraid. Let me know how I'm doing. Grade me like when you're in class. Now I'm the teacher and I'm asking for you to grade my performance, but I already know that I'm giving you great. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to stay notified.